How do I know if my ciliary muscle spasm is gone? Super simple. I think I answered that in the last one of these also put up an eye chart and the distance doesn't matter. Just somewhere in your workspace, see that you can read half of the lines at that distance that you pick before you do close up. Just check it a bunch of times to see what line you can read in an ideal scenario. You went for a high ache, you slept, you had a relaxing time, figure out what that baseline is and then keep an eye on that chart. Like after half an hour, hour, two hours, at some point you won't be able to read that same line anymore. Ciliary spasm. That's when you need a break. All right. Should I stagger cylinder corrections with spherical corrections? Or should I start adding slight cylinder corrections with a second and onward reductions? I don't know why you would start adding slight cylinder corrections, but staggering cylinder corrections with spherical corrections, yes. The general rule, the guideline idea is if you're reducing diopter ratio. So if your left and right eye have different spherical diopters, or if you have astigmatism, so you have cylinder diopters, always make simple reductions, quote unquote simple, meaning only spherical reduction, the same on both eyes, at least twice successfully before you do something complicated, like reducing cylinder, very generally speaking. You, it's, it's on, it's on, it's less common that you're able to make a cylinder reduction your eyes adopt to it, you no longer get double vision and blur, and doing it again tends to take a lot longer than going back to spherical reduction, which seems to take the biology a lot less effort, right? So in the beginning, you just want to make simple spherical reductions because you want, you want to get used to this whole process, and there's something about, don't ask me why, but I found this out over the last 20 years, to prime the system to be following the stimulus along the simplest reduction. Right? So the simplest reduction is just you reduce the size of the blur horizon. So you have perfect vision with your minus five, for example, glasses, and then you go to a minus 4.5, for example, you change nothing else, no diopter ratio, no cylinder, nothing. So your vision stays the same. It's just the, the distance that you can see clearly got a tiny little bit smaller. So now you have a little bit of blur challenge. It's the simplest reduction as far as the biology is concerned doing that once or twice at least to get the system like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. And then adopting to it is super helpful in making more complicated reductions like changing cylinder later, right? Like starting off simple, getting the system in, the, in place to be ready for that for whatever reason works better along with your habits and just process, right? Like don't start off with complicated stuff. Meow, 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 meow. Meow.